The Pedalboard Power Cable Kit gives any player the freedom to custom fit their pedal chain with up to six premium quality power cables. Plug in, power up, and play. Hey, what's up guys? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Cannery Ballroom today talking to the guys from Architects. I'm very excited about Howdy. this. Man, um, I know you guys aren't doing press on this tour except for us, which I'm super, super flattered. So Monica at Speakeasy and, uh, and all, everybody at Epitaph, thank you so much for making this happen because this is something that I've wanted to do for a long time and we've getting, gotten a lot of emails about this. So awesome. thanks so much for taking the time to do thanks this. Thanks for coming down. This rules, this rules. All right, let's get right to it. Sure. I see a roasted maple neck. Sure, you want to start with this? Signature telly. Yeah, this cool. thing is sick. So this is uh, my signature Barebone uh, with LSL. Um, this is kind of the second version of one that we've worked on for a while, 24 fret version. I was kind of going for like I wanted like a kind of a 50s butterscotch with kind of a metal twist on it. So totally. it's, it's a 27 and a half inch scale, so it's quite long. Um, we play six string only, so it's... I love that. Which is cool, like uh, it's quite a low tuning in, in this one, so that's why I kind of wanted something with a bit longer scale on it to are hold that. Are you going F sharp? This is F sharp, yeah. Okay. Um, so all of our tunings kind of are like a C sharp standard that kind of have a couple string variances, Variant but kind there. of sure. give or take on that. Um, yeah. So just out of curiosity, why do you guys... I mean, I love that you're playing a baritone, it's awesome, and I love having a longer scale. Yeah. It almost feels more natural to me for some reason, but why not sevens? If you're going to tune that low, how come you guys never switched over to sevens? Uh, it was mostly just kind of a, t a tonal tonality thing because um, we do a G-sharp tuning as well, which has kind of an interesting, like, a, it's like a Flob open Jewett. minor seventh kind of, so it's like a, not a traditional, like, a power, open power chord. So oh. it was just kind of a thing that evolved over time. Um, and it's really just the one string that gets dropped. So we kind of like having the, the normal tension and playability gotcha. of a six string and then just have kind of... So are you just running an extra heavy top string? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So it's basically like a six string yeah. tuning, or rather a seven string tuning with, with one string. string missing almost. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a good way to work around. Yeah. And I do feel like on seven strings, especially if you're getting down into lower tunings, A and B and stuff, that the tension is just weird. Well, that's just it, right? Like a lot, not all seven or even eight strings are long scale. So I, in my opinion, it kind of defeats the purpose because you need to keep the string tension. So. Right. And for me, I prefer a lighter string on a longer scale versus a shorter scale on a bigger string because you still can kind of get that twang you would get like in a on a regular standard scale, right? Right, a right. It almost tuning. feels like a like a natural guitar. Yeah, right? so like, it's, yeah. it's basically trying to mimic E or like a normal tuning, just low, so you don't have that flop, and it's still easy to play hard and dig in and get articulation and everything. It's awesome. I love the uh, the heel back here. So yeah. You can get a bunch of reach. Check this out, guys. Yeah. So awesome just, scoop. Yeah, I just want something really comfortable with kind of you know vintage flair on it. Sure. And this is almost a, almost a little softer here as well on the, yeah. the backside. Yeah. So we Love worked on that. that and just get make it a little. I mean, I'm not playing up high very often, but it's just nice to have that comfortability and everything. Sure. Yeah. What do you got in there? Bare knuckles, right? The new Misha's. Yeah. These are the Ragnaroks, which is this is my first one with them. They're really cool. Um, they're quite aggressive, very hot, but they still do cleans quite well and have a great split sound, which I do use sometimes. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Is that for both? Yep, so it's just like a master split, so you can have like, killer, yeah, kind of traditional tele emulated sounds That's as well. That's pretty versatile. Yeah, so it's, I mean, I have some guitars with five-way switches too, but I really fairly yeah. seldom use it live, even though it's, it's cool, but this is just simple three-way volume and then a tap, and this, this is actually bypassed for tone at the moment, but. Maybe it's because I'm from Nashville, but nothing makes me happier than to see really heavy bands <laughs> playing traditional yeah. style guitars, yeah. because it's kind of gotten out of, I don't know, taste or something like that. But really, if you think about it, a tele, is a slab of wood that totally. they got right the first time, man. You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. It's like 60-year-old technology yeah. that just works right. I yeah. love that. And there's just obviously a little mo yeah. modern touches and stuff like that, but it's pretty pretty standard, really. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sleek. Love it. And I love the neck, man. Yeah. What's the profile like? Is it pretty flat? Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. I think that we went with a, I can't remember if it's a 14 or 16-inch radius on it, but Some lock I like them tuners. flat without being crazy flat. Cool. Yeah, it just sounds great. It's really nice and stable. And on this trip, we've been in some kind of weird climates as well. Sure. Like we went from Phoenix to Denver to Florida, so it was all over the place, and it was 
quite, quite yeah. dirty the I'm whole way through. I'm guessing they spray this with nitrocellulose, right? Because yeah. it looks like it's starting to check a little bit. Yeah, almost. it was uh, pre-relics, but I am a big fan oh, okay. of kind of nitro finishes just because they wear nice and they tend to sound a bit better acoustically. Yeah. And Plus, I think a lot of modern lacquers are so thick and plasticky that it's time. really... I, it's, kind of kills I really notice it now. Like right, um, yeah. Not having a guitar that's nice. They just yeah. breathe so well, and like I feel if it, a guitar is nice and clear Resident, acoustically, yeah. obviously that's yeah, going to translate when it's plugged in too. So no, what is this? Is this alder? This is roasted what? ash. Ash. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. I've kind of not found my favorite wood yet, but so I've got some ash, some yeah. alder, but it, I feel like the tuning kind of makes a difference too. Like sometimes we use alder, and it kind of has a cool cool core tone with our, our tuning and stuff like that. Like the fundamental notes kind of cool. pop through nice and clear, but. So are these available for, for they purchase? Are. Yep, yep, these are available now. Um, there's, I think there's a 22 fret version available as well, which I can show you afterwards, but cool. this is, yeah, you can order these. That's the one, I love it, yep. I love it. And it's, it's great too, because it's not really obvious that it's a metal guitar. You could play it's country on it. Yeah. yeah, so it's really versatile. It's good just for if you're, you know, doubling some tracks in the studio, you want some big thick chords, rhythm yeah. stuff, you could, you know, use it very traditionally sure. as well. If you tuned it up, you could do some Texas country totally. on that thing, yeah. and it'd be great, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very cool, man, I yeah. love it. Well, I know um, you guys have kind of been back and forth with modeling amplifiers, which are obvious, obviously convenient when you're touring internationally, yeah. but you normally are running like a Mark IV and a dual rack, right? Yep, Mark V dual rack or is Mark kind of my five, favorite, yeah. Okay. yeah. Why the, are you using the Mark V for clean stuff and then the dual rec for the heavy tones? I use them both together. All at the same um, time. The, I think the Mark is generally just for clean, um, but they just sound nice together because the rectifier has that like just big, thick, kind of squishy bottom end, and then the the Mark is just that nice, precise kind of mid range, Zippy. and they just kind of yeah. complement each other really well. That rules. Um, I was using that rig on our last European headline tour for about half of it, but it's just easier for us to use Kempers and stuff, unfortunately. Like. I it's oh, just totally get it. yeah. economics and practicality and well sure and money cartage yeah i mean sure. can you imagine having to fly amps back and forth you know yeah. we've talked to bands that are spending serious money on cartage sure. and that's one of the reasons that you know a lot of people are switching over to modeling amps yeah so speaking of when you are building you know patches are you trying to compensate for the tones of the mesa or you're going for different in the camp you mean? right um exactly. it's i'm basically kind of using a like condensed version of what i normally would do so like i've and the other rig all the pedals are in the rack it's pretty much the same setup, it's just kind of a racked version of it. Um, but I'm using kind of similar profiles to kind of you know, get in the ballpark of it and everything. Gotcha. But not, I'm, I'm lazy with that, I'm not actually profiling my own stuff, I'm just no, using sure. the stock stuff currently. Which but, is great, and it's, it sounds you can awesome. totally do that, yeah. 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 I love the fact that you can find an amp that you're kind of comfortable with, like you know, sure. say a 5150 and be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. It kind of does that, well, that, that's great. So it, is every patch a different amp, or, or do you pretty much have a standard sound that you're going with? Uh, it's pretty simple. Like I kind of use the Kemper as if it were a head. So I've got like your clean crunch um, lead sure. sound, and there's three different profiles for each, and I just kind of use it as if it were a head. So I'm, I've got different patches uh, for delays and stuff like that, but the profiles all stay the same. Gotcha. Cool. I love that you're using some actual pedals too. Yeah, I'm trying to have some kind of happy medium. Um, Sometimes, like we'll be doing some festivals in the summer this year, which it's just easier to have a Kemper remote and stuff like that, just because it's quick. You don't have a long time just to throw it on stage. And, exactly. Yeah, totally. um, but it, the Kempers work great for using a pedal board if you want. So you can kind of have somewhat of a hybrid system. Yeah, and the Strymons work great, and the effects loop and everything. So I'm kind of just using it as if it were a, a tube head, just with pedals instead. With a pedal board. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's great. So um, I'm not seeing any cabs. No. Uh, all in ear. Yeah, all in ears. Okay. Um, we've done I think two or three tours without cabs, and it's just. Not really necessary anymore, especially with the Kemper. Sure. If, if you weren't on ears, it would make sense just to have a bit of stage reference, but right. you get such a nice crystal clear sound with the ears anyhow, it's not really necessary. It's not terribly necessary, yep. I get that. Well, right on. All right, so um, you're using a little mastermind to control everything. Yeah, this is, I really like the RGM stuff. It's really well um, designed, super easy to use. And do like you have your patches set up like clean, crunch? I kind of got it set up in, a, in the set. So like okay. depending on how long our set is, like I've got a, a headline set in here right now. So I just per song click through and then I've got, you know, some songs only have one sound, some have three or four and then they'll automatically change any delays and stuff like that, all with MIDI and everything. So right, it's super simple. Because you guys are playing to a click. Yep. Cool, yep. that's so convenient. Yeah, wow. it's great. Um, I've been using this sort of thing for a long time, and if you're gonna use pedals, I just yeah. you can't well, tap she, dance you, anymore. <laughs> you guys, if you guys haven't seen Architects Live, there's a whole lot of strobe going on, so being able to see your board must be an issue yeah. on, in and of itself. Yeah, so, so you yeah, wanna try and keep it as simple as possible. Totally, totally. Yeah. Is this, um, so is the Max on Tia style, uh, is that just something that's on? All the time? Pretty much for all rhythm stuff, yeah. Really? Um, I kind of like 
amps to be like, kind of in the ballpark of the gain you want, and then that just tightens it up just a little bit and gives you that extra totally, little, little yeah. push. It's not like the, it's kind of the standard. I learned that use. trick from Andy from Every Time I Die years and years yeah, ago. Yeah, for sure, same thing. You're running 800s with a tube screamer on the front end, just a little, just because it does that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and great. especially like if you're playing in a band that's got like a lot of low tuning, particularly like it takes out a little bit of the low end that you don't need, because the lower you tune, it just gets a bit floppy. And, and you just, have a bass player, you know. Exactly. A lot of people, especially. Kids like a hardcore kids that are that love really really heavy. We forget that guitar is a mid range instrument, for sure. and there are basses for, for sure. a reason. Yeah. So let it sit where it looks to live in the mix, and then totally. let the rest fill it out. So well, is there any way we could hear um, yeah, how sure. you're using the, maybe the timeline? And sure. The yeah. Um, what's cool on here? Well, basically, what I've got like uh, a, a clean patch, like a clean profile, a crunch profile, and then like my main rhythm sound. And then sometimes I use the drive, and some I don't. So I kind of have varying degrees of how much Depending gain on the there song. is. Yeah. So sure. like for example, a uh, song match made in heaven. There's like a kind of a in between crunch kind of sound. <laughs> That. Yeah. So it's just like a kind of a crunch sound that's boosted a little bit. And then for like the main riff, obviously it's like the lead channel. That kind of thing. Yeah. So it's, you know, you want that saturation yeah. without being too mushy. Man, I'm glad we did this rundown because hearing something that low on a baritone as opposed to like a eight string, yeah. you literally I can sometimes hear the tension flopping for sure. on yeah. the seven and eights, and you just don't on that. Yeah. That is so. So it's really just like cool. this particular tuning is kind of like an F sharp minor, and then the bottom two strings are just unison. You can add that that chunk and have the riffs where it's, but you just have big octave skips, kind of thing. So you've got right. the clarity, but you can still have the really big full bits and. And it doesn't feel weird yeah. or come yeah. out of tune on you. If you do yeah. like low power chords and stuff, it just kind of tends to get mushy, and we don't really even play a lot of totally. power chords, so. All right, while we're here, let's hear like a dreamy patch that you might be sure. using with the, uh, with the... So, something like this. So I'll use like the Strymon Big Sky on um, the cloud setting. So let me find the patch here. It's not in the set currently, so, so something like this. So it's just like the, the reverb cloud, but with full wetness. So we just use that for kind of like a dreamy stuff. So no dry signal whatsoever, it's just no. completely wet. Yeah. Not just for interludes and stuff like that. Yeah. Excellent. That's the kind of thing, right? Sometimes you can add a bit of chorus to that if you want. It just kind of makes it a bit more kind of synthy kind of vibe sure. and stuff like that. Do you feel like your um, decimator is, um, I feel like with real amp, sometimes if you don't, if it, it, you know, they can kind of suck your tone. A little bit. Like, does it affect the playability at all? You know, it's not too bad. Um, so this is the G-string version. Quiet. I mean, obviously there's not yeah. a cab on stage either. It's, but. I mean, there's not a lot of noise anyhow. I'll just go back to a lead sound for a sec here. So like, with that off, like there's not really. Yeah. Like I try and run all the signals so it's as tidy as possible. But um, this G-string version, it kind of like tracks your. Your clean signal as well, so you don't. If you're switching between clean and dirty, it doesn't just like totally chop off your sustain on clean stuff. So right. it's, it's pretty pretty good. There's always a bit of a compromise with this sort of sound, right? If you have the high gain stuff, but sure. it's one of the better ones I've tried. That kind of yeah. still has a musical sound. It's been a long time since those like, rack units yeah. didn't really yeah. work. Yeah, and right. I still and use those. That's what I was using. <laughs> the other yeah, yeah, they yeah. work great. I've had them my whole life, and some are great. And some I, I love the the ISP stuff though. That's always yeah. been really good. Yeah. Well, um, so Josh can't be with us today because congratulations, he's having his first child, he is, yeah. which is awesome. So your tech Martin has uh, been kind enough to step in and play guitar on this tour. Um, I'm guessing though, on an international tour, you guys would probably have a pretty similar setup, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah that's kind of the, the obviously the, the perk of the Kemper stuff is you can just take it anywhere and you're set. No power issues, none of yeah, that. Yeah, switches that's voltage, crazy. and you know if there's a something goes wrong, you can just use a backup and put your your, your setup on it, whatever, and USB stick. Love that. Yeah. Well, let's go down to your guitar boat, take a look at some more guitars, Sweet. and also um, your Kemper and how that's running. Sounds great. All right, Adam. Now we're side stage here, just off off the stage a little bit, and then this is kind of just everybody's Kemper here, right? Everything lives in one spot. Yeah. Well, that's handy. So basically, um, this is Josh's rig slash Martin's rig. Um, there's, there's one Kemper each and then a spare for each, except for we only have one bass one currently, but it's pretty straightforward really, just like guitar straight in, because um, he's not using any pedals. Um, and then over here, same idea, and then there's a radial unit that's just for switching between switching, packs yeah. and everything. Um, the bass is using the Avalon 
preamp as well and a dark glass pedal in there. Yeah, so the that's, microtubes is cool, man. Yeah, so yeah. you're kind of running a blend of that plus the, plus the, camper, the camper profile. And then I'm just using, like I said, kind of just the standard uh, built-in profiles. Currently nothing too fancy gotcha. at the moment. But Are you tweaking a whole lot inside of there? Not really. I'm kind of lazy. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't it. even have a camper at home to like the, dial uh, stuff in, so I kind of just refine it on tour a little bit and things plus like the that. the sounds are pretty freaking They're solid good. coming out yeah. of there. Yeah. The profile is good because it's kind of just like a snapshot of allegedly a good sound already. You don't really have to fiddle too much unless it's just you know, for a particular guitar maybe or something sure. like that. But yeah, wow. it's pretty straightforward. I like Nothing, how streamline that is. It just makes it easy for, for the guys to set up because especially at festivals when you've got you like a pretty quick changeover, yeah. like it's just lids off more or less and everything's more or less together already. Andy dandy. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at some other guitars. Cool. That, you know, obviously that Barry is totally cool, but you're... Yeah. Um, uh, I can show you the, the prototype version as well. So this, oh, yeah, right this is what came out first. Um, so it's very similar except it's uh, 22 fret. A um, little bit different neck shape, but it's basically kind of the same idea. This what is that fingerboard? Uh, this is ebony. And it's roasted, sure roasted is. maple it's neck really as well. Hard. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I really like ebony. And uh, these are bare knuckle uh, impulse pickups, which cool. are great. Yeah, those are great. Yeah. Um, this one's alder, which is a little bit different. It's just it kind of works well for that tuning. I find like I don't know, just are you are you using this for a backup to the butterscotch? Or? Um, this is generally my primary F uh, F sharp guitar, but I'm just kind of changing them around right now and playing around a little bit. But cool, right on. Yeah. And then I, I've during soundtrack, I think I saw you guys on some. Yep. ESPs and yeah. So um, Josh and Martin play uh, ESPs, and then I've got some Manas as well, which are excellent. Um, this is kind of my main G sharp guitar currently. Um, this is a Setius. Um, I haven't had a mahogany guitar in a while, so this one sounds really great. Uh, bare knuckles again. It's a beautiful. Yeah, it's just brain. just nice and simple. Yeah, it's a great guitar. These yeah. things are, are made super well, like really sturdy. Just really nice and clear and defined for the yeah. low tunings. These are a little bit shorter scale. These are 27, and the LSLs are 27 and a half. Gotcha. Um, slight difference, but yeah. yeah. So this would just be a different tuning? Yep, so we've cool. kind of got three primary tunings. There's the F sharp tuning, G sharp, and then we've got uh, one song in B as well. Cool. Yeah. This is actually the, the first custom one I got from Inez. Uh Baritone again. Gorgeous. Uh, different model. This one's called the Regis, which sure. is uh, got the crazy, I think it's an 11 ply neck through. Damn, so look at that, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. very, very punchy and bright, punchy guitar. Um, ash body, brown knuckle pickups again. Cool. All hip shot stuff. Simple. Super simple. Yeah, just love it. I yeah. love that headstock too. Yeah. Very, Strangely very enough cool. though, this is the only one I've seen with it's got this little raised logo and it's yeah. kind of cool. But, Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, I tell you what, why don't we have Martin come out and um, talk to us about uh, some of the ESP stuff in the, in the basses. Guys, this is Martin, who is cool enough to not only the the tech for architects, but also fill it in now. Yeah, well, one, one of two techs. One of two techs. I'm usually stage left. Look, I just look after Josh. Um, and then you have Calvin oh. Roffery, who's my stage right guy, my, the ying to my yang, if you will. Cool. He looks after Adam and, and Ali. Um, so, yeah, and then on this tour, yeah, Josh has uh, uh, had his first baby, which is amazing. Which is awesome. Um, Congrats again. Yeah. yeah, to keep the, the, the big machine rolling, uh, I've had to step in and cover him, which has been daunting but yeah fun all right Very gracious yeah. Yeah. what a guy <laughs> so when you guys are on um f sharp what guitar are you playing uh josh actually everyone's surprised at this and i kid you not josh josh plays this lcd we've had this for a few years now uh and it's as standard as it comes apart from the fish, the fish sure ones those are fluence fluence yeah. these are moderns uh we have like a range of like josh has moderns he has the kill switch uh signature mm -hmm. set in, in the g-sharp guitar which is really cool those well. actually sound really good they're really yeah, nice yeah. man the split call is amazing um but yeah the fishmans are great josh loves them he was an emg guy before and then kind of moved over that way i've heard that a lot um, lately th honestly this guitar like for being an affordable guitar like they're it's great yeah, yeah giving me any hassle for f sharp it's great it's ever so slightly longer um which i know josh isn't that massively into he likes like tw like a 25 and a half kind really? of regular strat scale uh which is what the g sharp is which is what you saw in yeah. the sound check which is so this is now when josh is with us this is his main backup this is what i'm using all the time now Oh, a little E2 action, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. quite it's a few years old, this one, yeah. I think. Um, which, yeah, I love this guitar. The neck's really strange on this one. It's massive compared to some other... Is it neck through? It is. I love that. It's lovely. Um, again, yeah, like we said, Fishman influence, but this is the kill switch set. Um, you get the split coil with it. Totally, nice. yeah. Hardtail, easy. Uh, Hardtail, yeah, and that's what I was saying. So, like, this, this one's 25 and a half. Uh, Josh just, I wish I had it with me, Josh just got uh, his Japanese uh, ESP Custom. Oh, uh, nice. Which was basically kind of like based off the, the Horizon. Model. Sure. 
but that is with his first ever tune bridge. I don't know if you've messed around with those things. You know, yeah, uh, kind of mind-blowing technology. Yeah. I don't know with, if I could set one up personally, but once they're hunkered in. It was a bit of a learning curve, yeah. but uh, the, the amazing thing about it is he could go back to, like his custom is a 25 and a half, but in G-sharp with that ever tune, it's not going anywhere. No. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Fine, yeah. Dude. And like, yeah, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, the guys uh, from Strike uh, or from Rise Against turned me onto those, and yeah, I was kind yeah. of blown away. Yeah, they're really Because if you just do the top three strings, you can still swell and yeah, play leads really, and stuff. Like, yeah, uh, it depends what Josh is doing. I, uh, fans of Josh will know he plays in a uh, uh, has his own like kind of thrash metal band uh, called Solosis at home, as right. well, which is a lot more like they like a yeah, nuclear metal, blast band, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like for that kind of stuff, uh, he I, I know he's mentioned to me before. He didn't know if he would necessarily need an Evertune. But uh, for yeah, architect stuff, it's sure you know, game more game tuning variability games. the lower you go. So also. even between game climates, game. yeah, yeah. Wow. Weird. Like uh, the best story I've been told uh, with our friend Devin Townsend. He said I love he Devin. Was, was late for a show, <laughs> walked onto a festival of literally they lost their baggage, things like this. I, as far as I'm aware, I, I can't recall the exact story, but he just said this is kind of what sold it to me is he walked out on stage, didn't even touch his guitar beforehand. It was it was turn up from the airport on stage. Pulled out the case. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure his uh, signature comes with yeah. a yeah. tune now, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's and lights up and all kinds of shit. Yeah. Stormbender. Uh, well, it depends because I, I have no idea how to fit them, but I know uh, Josh. I think he's starting to work with Evertune now, so I think we're gonna see. All yeah. Of see, I think you have to have a a, a, a pretty deep body to fit those, right? Yeah. They have to be retrofit. Into no, the... it's it's not that much bigger than the Floyd cavity. Really. Um, but uh, I am, you know, I I I'm not going around with a guitar out and stuff, so I don't know where yeah. we, we need to get all of his uh, guitars modded, but I think he's quite up for it. It's, cool. It's definitely an incredible game-changing bit of equipment. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, this one before, this is only just come back out. This is one of uh, Tom's old, old yeah. ESPs, yeah. Uh, which was in the locker for a long time. Sure. We've always liked it. Uh, I haven't swapped out for Fishman's yet. I need yeah. to do that. But uh, yeah, same thing, Horizon. Just work. Standard yeah. formula. It's great. Yeah, that's for a drop B for, for one song. Sure. Let's play uh, the title track. Really yeah. Well, so. ESP did a good job on this body style. They've kind of been that's with it for a long time. Yeah. Stephen it's Carpenter had a very, very yeah, signature. Yeah. Or, that's know, the first one stick. I ever saw when I was Same. reading premier guitar. And yeah. Stuff and I had one when I was a kid and I loved it, but it scared everybody I played in a band with because the headstock is so sharp. Yeah, <laughs> Those things sure. are dangerous. Sure. Um, but yeah, apart from that, the backup is the same, just a cool. different, different color. Uh, and some old bare knuckles in there. Again, yeah. need to swap them for fishermen. So we've got some in there. And then for bass stuff, are you guys all Dingwall? So, no, it's cut. Ali is like, Ali likes loads of stuff. Uh, sure, I get that. Known him, which is really cool. And it's been a, a bit of a journey trying to find that bass that he, the right one. he really likes. And then uh, a few years ago, uh, yeah, uh, our friend Nolly introduced us to them. Yeah, Nolly. Like, signature. Good, good. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and they're just insane basses, man. Yeah. They are. Like, they're just so insane. So Did it take him some time to figure out the fan fret, or was it a pretty natural? No, I think he found it pretty. It doesn't pretty well, really feel like, too radical. I've, I've heard from guitar players that, like, yeah, it feels just like if you played a, if you're, you know, used to playing a G and you play a G, it feels great. But Your hand doesn't really change position. With a single string, natural. it almost seems like it would throw you off yeah. a little more than a guitar. Yeah, maybe. Like, uh, but no, he hasn't seemed to have any issues and yeah. stuff with it. I mean, he had. Plus, like, it just looks another one with a fan fret. It looks so freaking that. cool. Mm, it looks like a uh, race car. Yeah, I love this one. Yeah, Al loves a P bass. We all love it, bass. It's great, and yeah, the, these oh, this thing are great, man. They're the most acoustically loud like, basses I've ever come across, especially for the tuning the guys do. Um, it just gives you like such a like solid fundamental yeah, pitch, and it's just absolutely. so clear. Sure. Like Nolly's always gone on about bass should be in his his mind bass should be more like piano and like in sustain and clarity huh. of notes and stuff and the way you approach an instrument. I know that's how he approaches his instrument. That's an interesting and, take for sure. I mean, yeah. anything that dude says, we we yeah, we believe him as well. So yeah, he, for sure. And then um, he kind of knows what he's doing. <laughs> this is brand new. This oh look at this bad boy. Yeah, this one's sick. This one's a bit different for Al, but uh, yeah, we got this maybe a week ago. Yeah, it's a something. very interesting homage. Uh, yeah, Sheldon sent it out. I believe they've just stopped making these. So I think Al got the last one. Wow. One of the very last ones, which is really cool. Um, God, it looks like you could surf that thing. Yeah. Mega long I'm scale. Not yeah. Too sure <laughs> what configuration of pickups he likes, like using there's so many options mm -hmm. on this one. Are they Bertolli's or something? Or? No, they're Dingwalls. No, they're actual yeah, Dingwalls. Actual Dingwalls, yeah. Okay. Um, so are those, I believe. Um, but I don't know what, he hasn't had much time to really figure out what he is. I think tonight might be the first show, actually, cool. with it, it yeah. Um, but yeah, we went off, you need slightly longer strings for this. So uh, yeah, we just like Dingwall strings, they sent, they sent some out and Daddario look after us for everything else, which is really cool. That's great. Yeah, I guess I forgot to ask about yeah. uh, strings and. Oh yeah, the best. Daddario, huh? Yeah, they're great. Across the board. Yep. Cool. Dunlop picks. Um, and then, 
Are you playing a heavy pick? Not really. No, we're using uh, these are pretty new actually. They're like uh, they're Jazz Three, I believe. Jack, oh, okay. Jazz Three uh, XL. I love the Jazz Three, yeah. Tortex. Yeah, it's the yeah. green equivalent, and it's just kind of a nice mm -hmm. blend for rhythm and. Sure. And then owls yeah. on those uh, Tortex yellows. Yeah, which are great yeah, too. Just yeah. customs. Um, yeah, good old P. New as well. Yeah, yeah classic. Old JP setup, setup, yeah. Uh, and this thing. Oh, sound. these are the new ones that have the. Uh, the, the yeah, that's yeah, cool. They sound insane, man. It's really good. Yeah. Again, that's just for Holy Hell. That's all he uses that for. It's noticeable, this bass. Really? <laughs> when he puts it on, yeah. It's like, I know Calvin's like adjusted all the packs and stuff, but it's just bright, man. I mean, the tuning. Makes sure. The as well. So you get used to hearing the G and the F, and then you hear that B in your ears, and you're like, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really positive. I've always loved the juxtaposition of, um, you know, a, a traditional, especially Fender style guitar, and very low tunings because. You know, like, I don't know, there were some bands back in the day, like Acidies Burn, that did that thing with, it's like, so slinky and so Fender sounding, but it's so heavy too. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's really interesting, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Thrice, for example, yeah, has totally. that thing going on, you know. The best band. Yeah, they rule. <laughs> um, this is fairly old now, actually, it's like uh, a year or two. Um, but uh, this was the first fret that I had, which is made as a Jabba V fret. Yeah. Yep, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah and a custom one. Some Aguilar. Yeah. Um, this space is insanely light. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did not see that. What is it made of balsa? Maybe? I, I don't, don't know. know. That's what maybe? I mean, this is like a pretty honking. This is a Cadillac of a bass, and yeah. it yeah. does it's not. Cool. You could throw that. It's cool. Yeah, I think yeah. that one's got the dark glass preamp inside of it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is, yes, very cool. Uh, and then Al's the last bass is this. I love this bass. So Sandberg, again. Ah, those are so nice. Familiar yeah. Shape. Mm -hmm. um, I always think that is so classy, yeah. those little four knots yeah, that yeah. they do on all the bases. Yeah. I don't know why I love that, but little I think touches. it's so cool, yeah. yeah. This, uh, yeah, this is a golden oldie, this bit. It's amazing. It's uh, really consistent. It sounds amazing. Plays great. And if I had to guess, I'm, I'm betting that's a lot heavier, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. My friend, yeah, that's more like all my friends that play yeah. Sandbergs are, you know, they're, they're generally yeah, pretty weighty. Although it's not version. as bad as I expected. Yeah, he's got a five string version of that as well. Just cool. Scratch play, but yeah. Great mates, man. He likes to pick and choose, I guess, but the ding will seem to take the top spot all the time now. So. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to do this Pleasure, and man. for walking us through all this gear. I know the fans are going to love it. New record is great. I want to congratulate you thank on you that. Thank you very much. I think that would absolutely honor Tom, and I think he'd be proud for you guys to be still making this music. Thank so. you very much. Appreciate it. I love it. it. You guys stay tuned for more rig rundowns, riff rundowns, lessons, all that fun stuff. See you soon.